what are we here for? What are we here on this earth for? Uh, what are the reasonings? What's your purpose? Where am I going? What am I meant to do? What am I passionate about? Why was I born? Why am I alive? Who am I? Who's God? Who's God within me? How's my environment? How do I switch my attitude? How do I shift my mindset? How do I get better? How do I improve? How do I gain fame? How do I gain status? How do I gain money? How do, how do I get rich? Um, what am I doing here? You know, these questions we all have um, as humans because we want to get better. We want to improve. So what happens is that we're born. We're, we're bo are actually before we're born, right? This is my belief here. Before we're born, we come down with this great idea of what we're going to do in this lifetime. And it, and we see it all. We see the entire, our entire lives. And we're like, hell yeah. I want those parents. I want that situation. I want this environment. I want to be born here. You're choosing it all, right? You're choosing it all. And then you, you're born and your mind starts recording as a baby. You know, from the, from the, the, you know, the development stages inside the womb, it's, it starts recording now. Then you're, you're born as this little baby. Guess what? You don't remember shit about you choosing. You don't remember shit about, you know, what your journey will entail. You don't remember nothing. And you're like, you, you start identifying with new beliefs, okay, the beliefs that are here on earth, not your spiritual beliefs, not your heroic life beliefs, not your, you know, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make a great life beliefs and learn and, and live and, and challenge myself. Not, no, 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 not none of those. You take on the beliefs that you're inferior. You're no good. Why did I grow up in this family? I hate my life. I hate my parents. I'm emotional. I'm stressed. I'm full of anxiety. I got to pay these bills. I hate these kids. I got, you know what I mean? Like you take on all this stuff and then you're living life and you forget who you really are, that you're a part of God and God is within you. You look up to the sky and you're like, oh man, God, why? And then, uh, everything's just laughing at you, you know, the whole universe is laughing because it's like we fail to look inside. We always look up something external of us and we fail to look inside deep down and, and see where our joy is, our um, attitude is, and what makes us happy. Where's that at? Where, what really makes you happy? You know, one of the easiest and hardest thing to do um, in case you're bucked up on something challenging or bucked up on something that are, that's, uh, that's embarrassing or got you feeling shame or whatever, you know, whatever type of emotion or even fear, you know, what's the easiest and the most hardest thing to do when you have these feelings? I'll tell you, matter of fact, I'll show you. It's to smile. It's the easiest thing to do that shifts probably everything within our, uh, cells, right? Like, whoa, you know, just a minute ago, we were feeling a little stressed out, man. I had to, you know, produce some hormones that says easy, you know, slow heart rates down and things like that, get you all lethargic. But this chick smiled. She sh totally shifted the way that we were supposed to react to something that she normally reacts upset, mad, timid, scared, weak, cowardly, afraid, you know, she, she shifted it. She just, she just smiled because in that moment of smiling, in that moment of smiling, nothing else matters, man. You're, you're really in the now. So if the, the more often you smile in all situations, the more you're training yourself to uh, identify with that that, that God in you, to identify with the spirit in you, to identify with the perfect in you. Because, you know, the reflection of what we create out here, okay, you're, you're recreating whatever's in here, this internal thing, right? Because the eyes, the eyes is just, let's see if I could, uh, sight, let's talk about sight for a little bit, okay? I told you about the, the slits, and I want you to look that up. If you're watching this on YouTube,
Maybe come back to this video and go learn a little bit about the slit test. But an atom, an atom, an atom is, you know, could be anywhere all at once. Could be in Japan. It's it's omnipresence. It's it's everywhere, right? The same one atom. But when we look, and scientists have looked, that's why I want you to look at the double slit test. Scientists have tried to look at these atoms. And once you look at something, it changes. The behavior of it changes. You know, have you been in a psychology class where uh, the teacher asks you if there is a tree and you're not in the forest, but the tree falls, does it make a sound? Does it make a sound? And it's one of those loopy questions that got you like, yes, but. No, but yes, but you, you go back and forth with yourself for a little bit. I say no. You know, once, you know, you're not there to perceive it. You're not there to change it. Okay? If you're not looking at something, what is it doing? Do you know? Because we actually have to perceive and put all our beliefs. And, you know, we I believe this is a phone. Like, literally, there is a strong belief that this is a phone. What if there was a belief that this was something totally different? And I really believed it. Like, that's why I say, so people wake up and they really believe that they're millionaires. They really believe that they're great. They really believe that they're supreme. They really believe that they're experts. They really believe that they're the best marketers. They really believe that, that, they're, that they have the solution. They really believe that they're great. They really believe that they're the fastest. They really believe that they're the best. They really believe that they're superheroes. You can't mess with a man's belief. So how do we tighten? How do we get to that state where we believe with such power, where we believe with such uh, strength and, and the dynamics of it is so concrete that our belief system is a rocking and rolling? Practice. Practice. Once you get a belief that doesn't complement your set of standards for yourself, say to yourself, this is contrary to what I believe. It could be small, it could be large, but your belief system, your belief is the key. That's the key to whatever you want. It's the belief because, you know, if, if I go to you right now and I say, hey, listen, man, I, you know, I say, hey, listen, you got it. You got it. You're the best. Imagine hearing that. As a child growing up, imagine hearing every minute, every angle you turn, somebody saying, yo, you the best. You are super fantastic. You could do anything that you want. You're amazingly beautiful. You are the smartest. You are super confident. You know things. You are absolutely phenomenal at anything that you do. You are absolutely the best one out here. No one can contest the genuine genos generosity genius behind you. I mean, imagine hearing that from the moment you're born to now. Oh, your belief. Oh, shit. You're, you, you would be on a freaking 50. While everybody's down here on a 2 with their low confidence, you are up there on a 50, 60, 70. Eight, nine, no one can get you down because you have that strong belief. Now, we've had other things happen to us in, or in our entire lifetime where we heard the opposite. You can't do that. You should be careful. You made the mistakes. You didn't learn no lessons. You're not rich. We're poor. We got this. We don't have that. You're inferior. You can't ever be like that. It's because you're the, of the color of your skin. It's because you're a woman. It's because you're gay. It's because you're flamboyant. Whatever. I don't know what you're hearing, but imagine that we've heard all of these things coming up, coming up, coming up. And we realize that we get to this point when you're into self-improvement, personal development, getting your mind right, getting your spiritual right, getting your mental right, getting your physical right. And then you're like, 
damn, does the tree make a sound? I don't know what to believe. Because it's hard for you to grasp the new concepts, concepts of self. It's very hard for you to grasp that concept of self, especially when you're trying to change these beliefs that have been recorded since you were a baby. It's tough. I'm not going to sit here and say it's not tough. What I am going to sit here and do is say you have to practice these new beliefs. What is it that you want? What miracles do you want? Because you could go ahead and look up in the sky and pray and wish and hope. Or you can look within and say, I, I, I am at cause in this lifetime. I to change my mindset. I to change my beliefs. I am rich. I am the powerful use of affirmation. Do you know what an affirmation is? Hey, listen, I did a whole three hour audio on affirmations alone. I call it affirmations, actionable affirmations for comfort killers. I want you to have that. Go over to thecomfortkillers.com right now or check out the description in this here thing. Let's stop going off of these false sense of beliefs. Someone put it there. We agreed to it. And now we're running the cycle of it. We're running through it. You know, one thing they say, you can't teach old dogs new tricks. I used to hate that because when I heard that when I was younger, I was like, damn, so whoever I am now, that's it. That's it. And I'm over here like, man, I still I still have more growing to do. I want to definitely change a few things here and there. And you telling me you can't teach a new a, a old dog new tricks? That's a belief. That's a belief. So it goes by practicing and really being aware of what's coming in, what is coming in, and what you believe, what you accept, what you agree to, what you give the head nod to. And here's the thing, my bad, that was that was a little gross. That was a little gross, <laughs> but it's been bothering me. Um, but here, here, here's the final, here's the final conclusion to this whole thing. Because I started off with talking about the atom and how it changes when you look at it. The belief that you have right now changes your greatness. The low level, low energy, low oscillating beliefs that you have right now that's literally keeping you stuck and stagnant. Once you look at them and once you disagree, once you um, do not comply, it starts to act differently. You start to act and think differently. So that's what I want you to do. As soon as you are up against yourself, And the battle to win is change in belief. I want you to look deeply at what you're accepting and what you're complying to. And the moment you choose not to comply to it is the moment you start to change. Damn, right? <laughs> I am Stacey A. Cross. There's no E in my name. Check out the comfortkillers.com again. The affirmations, the agreements is what I call them. Affirmation slash agreements um, is available right now. I want you to get that three hour program. If you just need help kind of dynamically shifting what you're believing, the affirmations is the way to start, is the sole way to start that shifting process. So think about what you're thinking, think about what you're saying, think about what you're doing. These behaviors, yes, they're embedded because as babies, we didn't get that positivity, right? Um, And we got some positive, not saying it's all negative, but I am saying that there's some beliefs that we didn't agree to, that we're holding on to, and we're carrying through our our entire lifetime without questioning it. I wanted you to start questioning things. 
So check out that affirmation packet. It's on thecomfortkillers.com right now. Enjoy the rest of your day. I am Stacey A. Cross. There's no E in my name. Until next time.